Okay, we need to talk about what's happening in nuclear energy right now, because this is absolutely wild. You're talking about those insane returns, right? I saw one stock up 648% year-to-date. 648%? And that's not even the craziest part. While everyone's been obsessed with solar and wind, nuclear just became the most investable energy sector of 2025. And there are some legitimate reasons for it. AI data centers are consuming electricity faster than the grid can supply it. The Trump administration fast-tracked nuclear permitting with executive orders. The fundamentals are actually there. Exactly. So today, we're breaking down the top five nuclear stocks from established uranium miners to cutting-edge micro-reactor developers. I know you're skeptical about some of these valuations. Oh, extremely skeptical on a few of them. But there are some genuine opportunities here if you know where to look. Perfect. Let's start with number five and work our way up to the most explosive and most controversial pick. Sound good? Let's do it. Number five, Chemical Corporation, ticker CCJ. This is the foundation play, the safest bet in nuclear. And honestly, if someone told me they only wanted to own one nuclear stock, this is probably the one I'd recommend. Current price is $86.59, market cap nearly $38 billion, up 66% year-to-date. Which sounds modest compared to some names we'll get to, but for a company this size, 66% is massive. Right. So Cameco is the world's largest publicly traded uranium company. They operate the MacArthur River Mine in Saskatchewan, one of the richest uranium deposits on the planet. They also run Key Lake Mill, Cigar Lake Mine, and they have a fuel services division that converts uranium into reactor fuel. So they're capturing multiple parts of the value chain. Exactly. And here's why I like this. No matter which reactor technology wins, small modular reactors, micro reactors, traditional reactors, they all need uranium. Cameco is the picks and shovels play. What about the risks, though? Because uranium prices can be pretty volatile. That's the main one. Cameco is directly tied to uranium spot prices. If sentiment shifts on nuclear, which I don't think will happen, but it's possible, the stock would get hit. There's also geopolitical risk in Kazakhstan, where they have operations. But given that global uranium demand is projected to surge as countries recommit to nuclear baseload power... The tailwinds are strong. And unlike some of the speculative names we'll discuss, Cameco is profitable, has decades of operational experience, and trades at a reasonable valuation for a commodity producer. So this is your sleep well at night nuclear holding. Correct. It's the core position. Now let's get into the more interesting stuff. Number four, BWX Technologies, ticker BWXT. $203.12, market cap $18.56 billion, up 82% year to date. This is my favorite under the radar pick. BWXT is a monopoly that most investors don't even know exists. Okay, explain that. BWXT is the sole manufacturer of naval nuclear reactors for the United States Navy. Every submarine, every aircraft carrier, BWXT builds the reactor cores. This is a multi-decade monopoly protected by national security clearances and specialized manufacturing that competitors cannot replicate. So they have zero competition for one of the most critical defense contracts in existence. Zero. And it's not just naval reactors. They manufacture fuel for research reactors, operate DOE nuclear facilities, and they're positioning themselves as a supplier for the emerging small modular reactor market. What's driving the growth right now? The Columbia-class ballistic missile submarine program is a massive, multi-decade revenue stream. The Virginia-class attack submarine program continues. With global tensions rising, naval nuclear propulsion is a bipartisan priority. The U.S. Navy is expanding its fleet, and BWXT gets paid every step of the way. What's the catch? Because this sounds almost too good. The valuation has run up significantly. You're not getting a bargain. And the growth is tied to government defense spending. If there were major budget cuts to naval programs, BWXT would feel it. But realistically, do you see the U.S. cutting back on submarine and aircraft carrier production? Not in the current geopolitical environment. Exactly. So this is predictable, government-backed revenue with limited competition. It's not going to give you 600% returns, but it's a solid defensive play in the nuclear space. I like it. Let's move to number three, which is where things start getting spicy. 
Number three, new scale power, ticker SMR. 37.73 per share, market cap 10.75 billion, up 150% year to date. This is where I start getting really excited because new scale has something their competitors would kill for, NRC approval. They're the only company in the United States with Nuclear Regulatory Commission certified small modular reactor designs. And let me tell you why that matters. Getting NRC approval takes years and costs hundreds of millions of dollars. NuSkill has already cleared that hurdle. Their competitors are still stuck in the regulatory maze. It's a massive first mover advantage. They have both a 50 megawatt and 77 megawatt configuration certified. The stock popped 15% in mid-October when the U.S. Army announced the Janus program, up to 12 nuclear micro-reactors across nine military installations by 2028. NuScale is the front-runner to win those contracts because they already have regulatory approval. The Secretary of the Army said the Janus program will ensure power will never be the limiting factor in victory. That's a strong signal. And it's not just military. In September, NuScale announced a partnership with Entro One Energy and the Tennessee Valley Authority for a 6-gigawatt SMR deployment, the largest commitment in industry history. Okay, but let's pump the brakes for a second. Financially, what are we looking at? Q2 revenue was $8.1 million, up 710% year-over-year. Which sounds impressive until you realize they're trading at a price-to-sales ratio of 346 times. That's insane. They're early stage. They have $489 million in cash, over two years of runway, and management expects a firm commercial order by end of 2025. I hear you, but analyst price targets range from $31 to $60. Some think this has run too far, too fast. Fair, but if you believe small modular reactors become the backbone of America's energy infrastructure, New Skills regulatory head start is worth paying up for. It's a growth play for people comfortable with volatility. I'll give you that. Number two, Centris Energy, ticker LEU. Market cap, $7 billion, up 413% year to date. Okay, this is the one I'm actually most bullish on fundamentally. Really? More than the others? Yes, because Centris has a true monopoly on something every next generation reactor desperately needs. Halu, high assay, low enriched uranium. Correct. It's uranium enriched to between 5 and 20% U-235, and it's required by virtually all advanced reactors. Small modular reactors, micro-reactors, everything. And here's the kicker. There's no commercial source of Halu in the United States right now. We relied on Russia before, but sanctions closed that route. So Oklo, New Scale, X Energy, every company racing to build advanced reactors, they all need Halu. And Centris is the only American company that can produce it. That's a national security issue. Exactly. In June, Centris delivered 900 kilograms of Halu to the Department of Energy, the first significant domestic production. The DOE extended their contract through June 2026 for $110 million, with options for eight additional years. And they're planning a multi-billion dollar expansion in Piketon, Ohio. Right. If they get federal support, they'll scale from 16 centrifuge machines to industrial scale production. A full cascade could produce 6,000 kilograms annually within 42 months. What separates Centris from the pack? They're profitable today. $442 million in revenue in 2024, up 38%. Net income of $73 million. This isn't speculative. They have a monopoly on a product with surging demand and zero domestic competition. So why isn't this number one? Because Oklo has captured the market's imagination in a way that defies fundamentals. But if I'm building a portfolio, Centris is a bigger position for me than Oklo. Analyst price targets average one ninety four eighty, which seems... Conservative. Way conservative. When you're the only supplier of a critical national security resource, premium valuations are justified. This one has more room to run. And now number one, Oklo Inc., ticker OKLO. 136.05 per share, market cap $20.08 billion, up 648% year-to-date. Okay, here we go. You're not a fan? I'm a fan of the technology. I'm terrified of the valuation. Fair. But let's talk about why the market is going crazy for this. 
Oaklo is backed by Sam Altman, CEO of OpenAI, and they're developing the Aurora Powerhouse, a compact vision reactor designed for data centers, remote communities, and industrial facilities. The Aurora is a fast reactor that can use recycled nuclear fuel. The technology is genuinely innovative. And Sam Altman's involvement isn't symbolic. OpenAI's AI data centers need massive amounts of reliable electricity. Oaklo could provide dedicated, carbon-free power for the AI revolution. Which is a compelling story. They're also a candidate for the Army's Janus program. The compact, deployable reactors fit military requirements perfectly. So what's your problem? They're pre-revenue. They're years away from deploying their first commercial reactor. That 648% gain is pure speculation. But if they execute, if they commercialize Aurora, secure partnerships with major tech companies, win government contracts, the addressable market is enormous. Agreed. The bull case is massive, but the valuation is over $24 billion for a company with zero revenue. That's pricing in near-perfect execution. Execution risk is high. I'll give you that. And NewScale has a regulatory head start. Centris controls the fuel supply. Oaklo has to navigate all of that while also proving their technology works at scale. But the upside? The upside is exponential if they pull it off. But the downside is severe if they stumble. This is not a core holding. This is a small position for aggressive investors who can stomach extreme volatility. So you'd own it, just not with a huge allocation? Correct. Maybe 5% of a nuclear-focused portfolio, not 25%. All right, let's wrap this up. Top five nuclear stocks for 2025? Canico for stable uranium exposure, BWX Technologies for monopolistic component supply, New Scale for regulatory advantage, Centris Energy for strategic fuel dominance, and Oaklo for high risk, high reward microreactor exposure. If you had to pick three for a diversified nuclear portfolio, which three? Cameco, Centris, and BWX. That gives you uranium mining, fuel production, and component manufacturing, the essential infrastructure. Then maybe a small speculative position in either New Scale or Oaklo, depending on risk tolerance. I'd swap BWX for New Scale because I believe in the SMR thesis more than naval reactors. That's fair. The key is diversification. Don't bet everything on one name. Agreed. The nuclear renaissance is real, but stretched valuations and execution risk mean you need to be selective. If you found this valuable, hit that like button and subscribe. We're doing deep dives like this every week if we get good interest in podcast style. Drop a comment. Are you bullish on nuclear or do you think the rally is overdone? We read every comment. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you in the next one.